These are just a few of the great army of airmen who took part in the three great saturation attacks on the German capital. And there's no sign of strain after completing the most dangerous flight in the world. You can see from the bomb design how many flights this plane has made over enemy territory, including two in daylight. And as you see, it's an empire affair. Let's listen to some of the men who've been pounding Berlin with a British variety of a blitz. I took part in the first of these three raids and uh, found Berlin very heavily defended. The trip was a fairly easy one and we saw another of Germany's much vaunted new weapons, which is the rocket shell. It did not appear very effective, and I don't think it will cause us much trouble. Um, I'd like to introduce my three um, squadron, squadron leaders who also took part in these raids. Squadron leader Pullen, who took part in the first raid, um, the same one that I did. Squadron leader Pullen. Well, I thought much so as you, sir, that it was a very quiet trip, and we had no bother at all. We were right over the centre of Berlin before they started uh, throwing up the flak at us, but uh, there was no trouble as far as the route was concerned, although we did see one or two people getting shot up. Squad Leader Benjamin took part in the uh, second and greatest of these three raids. Squad Leader Benjamin. Uh, of course, the second raid was noted for the terrific explosion we've all heard about. It certainly was a big explosion. Uh, I remember one on the Hanover trip, but that didn't compare in the least with this great flash we saw coming under the clouds. I looked down and I could see Langsters crawling across the clouds, silhouetted against them. It really must have been a very frightening thing down below. We have here Flying Officer Hewitt, who took part in the raid of Squadron Leader Benjamin, one of our promising young navigators. <laughs> well, I on two of these three trips, sir, and uh, navigation this time was rather more difficult than usual. There's bags of cloud all the way to the target. So everything was sort of on dead reckoning, and in that case we rely entirely upon our pilots flying the courses we give them, and really good accurate flying indeed. But at one point, that does help you in these big raids. If you don't see a lot of your own aircraft around you at any time, well, you know you're off track and you've got to do something about it quick. Uh, Squad leader Moss was on the third trip, as you'd like to say something about that. Uh, well, we <coughs> did have a few fighters on our trip. The actual flak over Berlin was very small indeed. We saw very little of it, but we saw three or four fighters ourselves. The cloud was much thinner than on the two previous days. But one thing I did notice was the vicious way in which every German town now seems to throw up flak indiscriminately. They all look as though they're absolutely scared stiff of having anybody anywhere near them. They did a grand job, and it's interesting to recall the words of Air Chief Marshal Harris, spoken a year ago. There are a lot of people who say that bombing can never win a war. Well, my answer to that is that it has never been tried yet, and we shall see. Germany, clinging more and more desperately to her widespread conquests, and even seeking foolishly for more, will make a most interesting initial experiment. Japan will provide the confirmation. <laughs>